Hello and welcome to the continuing videos of the Structures and Forces Unit. This video uh, works on answering the question of how is structural form related to structural function and a new word here for some structural aesthetics. Outcomes that we're going to cover today, SLO 1.1, recognize and classify structural forms and materials used in construction. SLO 1.3, describe and compare example structures developed by different cultures at different times. And SLO 1.4, describe and interpret natural structures, including the structure of living things and structures created by animals. So first of all, our structure of the day. It's a bit of a weird one. And it still exists, it still stands today. This structure is located in Brussels. And it was built in 1958 for the World Fair, stands 335 feet tall, and it's called the Atomium. Now you notice in the word it says Atomium, or Atom. The shape of the building is actually a scientifically accurate representation of a unit cell of an iron crystal. So if you magnify an iron crystal by 165 billion times, you get this structure. The Atomium contains a restaurant and a museum inside the spheres. So where exactly is this thing? So let's take another look. Here is our school, and we're going to fly almost halfway around the world to Brussels, located in Europe. And as we zoom in and get a little close, you can see right away, boom, there it is. It's a very strange structure you can visually see from the air. Uh, the shadow itself is something that would kind of perk up your eye. And What is that, you'd think? But there it is. There's the Atomium. Uh, wonderful tourist attraction. Something you just have to see once in your life. I tell you, it's pretty amazing. So let's talk today about structures and functions and what the function of a structure is and how building it has some um, needs. So let's take a look at this one first. What is the number one function of this structure? If you selected shelter, that's, that's the best answer. It is a shelter used by people of the north. It's great shelter for the, from the wind and the snow. You'd think a shelter made of snow would be cold, but it actually when you get a little fire going in the top, it's actually pretty warm. So yeah, the major job of this is shelter. Okay. So when we talk about structures, no matter how large or small, they're designed to perform a specific function. That could be a building, that could be a bridge, that could be a deck. Okay. They have a single use or a purpose. Now many structures have more than one function. This for example is a structure that has one function. Its function is to transport you from point A to point B, but it does so very differently. So the design is very different, but the function would be the same. What do you think we are comparing in these three photos? In these three photos, we're comparing the roof design. Some is aesthetic, and some is functionally designed to help with the living conditions. So in this photo here, we're looking at aesthetics, or how it looks. It's very ornate, very decorated. Do you know what the name of this building is? It's the Kremlin in Moscow. The second picture here is a picture located somewhere in a mountainous climate. And the roof has a very specific design or, or shape to it. What do you suppose the purpose of having a roof like this is? Well, the purpose would be so that snow doesn't build up on the top of the roof and increasing uh, the weight of the roof. So by having slants on either side, snow or rain or moisture just simply rolls off to the sides. And in this picture down here, these are called adobe houses. What materials do you think these adobe houses are made out of? Adobe houses are usually made out of earth mixed with water and sometimes organic materials such as straw or dung, poop too. And the soil that is usually found in is usually contains sand, silt, and clay. So these structures are very earth made and they have a more flat roof. The flat roof will allow the structure to absorb the sun's rays and keep it cooler inside. That's why the people of the desert use these types of buildings in these types of materials. So besides form and function, structures can be classified by the materials and components that they are made out of. Some natural and man-made structures share some very common features. Some features that we look at when we're building a structure is the safety and the cost. Now all structures are designed and built within an acceptable margin of safety. But when they build structures, we usually build in a large safety margin so that 
to overcompensate to make sure that there isn't any damage or any structural failures. However, when building a material and adding this extra margin of safety, there is a cost to it. Adding extra strength to a structure costs money, as well as using more highly skilled workers and better materials to do the job. When we look at something like uh, the Burj Dubai, okay, it's the tallest structure in the world at this point. They say in a couple of years it'll be taller, but the Burj Dubai had a lot of time and energy spent on bracing it for the wind. So planners, when they design their structures to withstand conditions such as high winds, they hypothesize that at certain areas of the globe what conditions they need to plan for. Good design is a compromise between a reasonable margin of safety and a reasonable cost. You can't have a really high margin of safety without having a higher cost. So when they build the Burj Dubai, there is a huge consideration for wind and wind pressure. So the building slightly changes in form as it travels up towards the, uh, well, towards space because it's that tall. It's just absolutely huge. Now, usually, totally unexpected events will cause even the best well-designed structures to fail. Unexpected events such as those that happened on September 11th. Now, scientists do know that in some parts of the world we have earthquakes. Earthquakes are unexpected, but they know that in some parts of the world that they happen, so they can plan for them, and they can design certain uh, structural enhancements or certain things to put in a building to save it from earthquakes. Structures can also be classified or grouped according to the materials used to build and the structure's aesthetics. Now, aesthetics is the pleasing appearance or effect that an object has simply because of its design. So something that might be aesthetically pleasing to some would be the Vegreville giant Pisanka. This is located in northern Alberta. It's a Ukrainian egg. Okay? Pisanka eggs were painted using it like a type of wax and a very special uh, little pen. You get this very intricate design. Other buildings may be a little bit unusual, but are still uh, considered to be aesthetically different. This is the Experience Music Project in Seattle, and it's right beside the Seattle Space Needle. And you can see the Space Needle just located in the top part of the picture. I, I don't know what this building is. Um, I don't know where it is. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know. It's strange. But what's the question we're answering today? We're answering how is structural form related to structural function and aesthetics? So whatever the object is designed to do is its function and form, what it looks like and aesthetics dictate that function. Okay, so hopefully that's a good overview for you on that and we will end it there and we will talk soon on the next topic.